right, welcome folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. This is going to be your sit rep for Monday, 6.30 p.m. Central Time, coming to you from the great state of Texas. And so without further ado, let me hop on over the board. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and bell for notification uh, to get all the latest and greatest as things start to take place. All right, so uh, over here on our flat map, uh, looking at about 163 uh, mill aircraft up right now. It's just a tad or a skosh lower than what we normally see. I think usually about this time of day, we're around 167, 170 range. Um, very rarely does it go up from there, but it has from time to time, and so uh, which makes for a very interesting evening. So, uh, But today, it looks like it's kind of waning off a little bit. Now, today, earlier, uh, I will tell you, I got a lot of reports from uh, some folks on the west coast of a couple sonic booms. I guess we had some um, some fast movers that uh, decided to go really fast right off the coast and uh, exceed that uh, the sound the sound barrier and uh, the sonic booms were heard around. So that's kind of a cool thing. It will certainly rattle your windows, and if they're low enough, it will uh, it'll you can feel it go through you. It's a pretty wild feeling. But um, uh, so there's that. Uh, and then we had a C of uh, R-135 activity, C-135, E-135, uh, as well as Sentry activity earlier today uh, all over the, the kind of the, the center, the meat of the map here. Um, don't know what was going on there, but uh, it was just kind of an interesting thing to see. Now, we still have one. Let me see if I can pull him up. Uh, this is a E-3 Sentry. This is what they call an AWACS. Um, for those not familiar with that, it's kind of considered as... Uh, air traffic control, um, but um, they actually have the ability to also do what you know, Stingray and Dirtbox kind of technology on steroids, where they can actually grab data from the ground. And so that is what you see this right here. Uh, anytime you start running circles like that, which are real tight grid circles, uh, they're they're gathering data. So whatever was below them, so this is South Carolina here. Um, see if we can get in a little closer, Florence. Uh, here uh, don't know what was in the middle of the map but something around here uh, they had a lot of interest in earlier today okay and so uh, looks like that one is now headed back to base so RTB and he's actually just landing that was Nova 17 okay I uh, just want to point that one out we'll take a closer look here in a minute at some of the other stuff if I can pull it up uh, just to show you guys, uh, get over here to Skyglass. Uh, one of the things that I love about this app is just that uh, uh, it allows me, like during the day, I can see some things and and uh, just kind of grab it and hold it. Um, whereas over on OpenADSB, I, I, you know, you've got to actually take screenshots or record it. Uh, now I have to do that on here too if I hit the wrong button, but I didn't this time. I actually got the right buttons. And so uh, these are going to be your R135. These are all your spy birds. All right. Now, one I want to point out. Is this one that was down here over Columbia? Um, so it looks like this is probably the third time we've caught these R135s down here in this general area. Now remember, this area here is where we're getting a lot of the Haitians that are coming up. Uh, but I don't know what's going on here, other than I will tell you, I do see a lot of Spec Ops birds down here, um, and so we we have some type of mission or activity happening in uh, this area. Okay, between Colombia and Venezuela. Uh, on a regular basis um, because almost every day you see them down here, which I'm kind of surprised we can actually see them. But you may remember now for uh, it's been at least a year and a half, maybe longer, uh, the magma birds were coming down here on a regular basis. And those are your spec ops birds, right? The Dornier uh, 328s. And so, um, but this R135 was actually running routes uh, down here in, uh, in this general area out over the water and then back up here. And then it came back to the States. So that's kind of a long flight. You think about it, uh, rolled all the way back up here. And then this is that century we were just looking at that was running uh, some routes over uh, South Carolina in the Florence, kind of uh, west of Florence. And then earlier today, too, we had these fellows up. Uh, we'll take a closer look at this one and, uh, and this one here over the, over the West Coast. Now, that's a B703, a little bit different, but still does kind of the same thing. So uh, these are all spy craft, okay? Uh, and that is your military spying on you. Okay. All right. Now, uh, on that note, uh, we'll we'll come back to this spycraft thing here. Let me just see if I can. There it is. All right. Let me pull this up real fast while we're talking spycraft. Okay. Because uh, this one caught my uh, interest today. Now, this is uh, R135. This is actually going by call sign same four zero. 
uh, flew out of Spokane, Washington, back down. Uh, now, this is Boise, Idaho, uh, Bozeman, Montana, Billings. Uh, Yellowstone is right here. All right. Uh, don't know what they're doing in that general area over Idaho, but it looks like it's uh, some mountainous areas. Uh, but they are definitely grabbing data. All right. There and down here as well. Okay. So there is that. Uh, again, Spycraft. Okay. And that's one we looked at on this on Skyglass over here. That's this one right here. All right. Okay. Now, let me back up a little bit. I uh, want to talk just briefly um, as we uh, get into the whole Build Back Better theme. Uh, because I think it's supposed to go the other direction. In fact, I think it's going the opposite direction of uh, not build back better. All right. And so uh, earlier this morning, there were probably an additional 40 boats out here anchored. Uh, I don't know where they all went. Um, they look like they're actually, if they're green, they're not moving. So they're sitting. So, uh, but I will tell you the port uh, is, is packed. I mean, this looks like a bunch of m and sitting in there. Um, and so, uh, that is a ton of containers, and these are not uh, even remotely, as you kind of see us zoom in. Uh, the problem doesn't look like it's getting any better, folks. It looks like it's, uh, it's, it's at a minimum maintaining, but I would almost say it's getting worse by the day, okay? Uh, again, uh, you know, jellyfishing, right? They try to make a problem better. They don't know what they're doing, and uh, they actually create more problems, so... Uh, there you have it. So I would imagine that uh, Flashbang this evening with uh, sitting at dinner with with uh, Z from China is going to be kind of an interesting conversation. I'm sure he's getting his check from him this evening uh, and Hunter's probably joined them for dinner. But uh, this is uh, where we are right now. So for today, if we look at Flashbang's schedule, uh, put on his pants, start a candy crush in about 930. Um, let's see. Then we had uh, Permit Patty was back here doing her briefing. And then we've got this, uh, the biggest bamboozle. We all just got, I don't know if you feel your wallets. Oh, they just got a lot lighter, okay? Uh, as did your kids, kids and kids, <laughs> like for the next three generations. Uh, they're spending money that, that we don't have. Uh, but uh, there is that. So today, between uh, 3 p.m. and 7.45, uh, we uh, basically spent a bunch of money and then are, are basically having dinner with the enemy. So, uh only, only, only this administration. Simply amazing. All right. There is that. Now let's pop over here real fast. I do want to talk a little bit about Ukraine activity. Uh, I will tell you, this is right along in here is that border uh, where we have almost 100,000 Russian troops built up. Um, that is, uh, from my understanding, that is still in play. And so uh, throughout the day, I didn't see any flights in this general area, but it looks like they're starting to fly, which is really kind of interesting. Last time that took place, we had no flight activity. So uh, we tend to have some, uh, looks like, heading across the region. So uh, we'll keep our eye on that as things start to unfold, all right? Uh, have no idea what this no-call sign is down here in the middle of Romania. Um, just kind of a random box. Let me see if it, N-A-N-A. -N -A. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That may actually be, let me kind of zoom in on that. I think we just get some ground chiclets. Those are probably actual aircraft. They're just not coming in properly. So, okay. Now let me back up. We'll take a look at the, the volcanic activity for the ash alerts uh, to see what we've got going on. Now I see we still got La Palma cranking. And then we've got these two. Uh, this one's in Japan. Uh, this one's down here in, uh, let me see here, just west of Papua New Guinea. So that's probably the Philippines or rather Singapore, Indo. Okay. Uh, so that one's popping. That's a new one there. Haven't seen that before. And then we've got, looks like five in here plus that one. So, uh, yeah, we're sitting about eight, which we're averaging about eight every time we have a show now. So uh, typically I wouldn't have all this clutter with the aircraft going, uh, but we were looking at uh, traffic over Ukraine. And so that kind of. All right. Now let me hop in over here onto Biggs Army Airfield and we can start kind of peeling the onion a little bit relative to um, immigration, okay? Now, I will tell you, the ones that we're seeing come in primarily into this area right now are still Afghanis, okay, the poppies. Uh, just so you know, uh, that has not ended. Although the media acts like, oh, well, that, that already took place in the past. Folks, we are still getting people in almost every single day to our country from Afghanistan. Now, they're not coming out of Afghanistan directly, 
they're coming out of the areas that they staged them around Afghanistan and they're just continuing to trickle them in okay so with that said we had an arrival that came in that's Omni Air came in from Fort Worth Alliance and then from Indianapolis now uh, it looks like the one went back to Fort Worth today so that probably took a load of poppies back if I had to guess uh, rehomed them uh, which created some empty beds in our uh, bigs location and so those will be refilled all right and then this one here we got a scheduled departure that looks like it's headed down to uh, Fort Hood uh, and I'm pretty confident we're sending folks down to Fort Hood too I'll be honest with you I the problem with uh, Robert Gray Army Airfield is that it is also tied to a, a international um, runway there an airport and so uh, very hard to find all these flights coming in because you've got American and Southwest and everybody else flying into that same airport. So, uh, but I'm pretty confident they are doing that there as well. Okay. Okay. So let's move on over here. Um, a quick look at the Eurocopter. Uh, again, these are like the Ford Explorers for police departments uh, out here in Hawaii. More than likely, these are going to be um, touring. Uh, helicopters are out there, you know, getting a good look at the mountains and everything and the beaches. Uh, but main focus is kind of the border. So I'm looking for those along the border uh, to see if we got anything new. Now that um, these two, let me just get in a little closer and see just based on tail numbers. Uh, that one's an LN and that one's an AM. I'm thinking these are probably going to be medical birds. Let me just pull in and see uh, if we have anything here. Air methods. Yeah. Uh, more than likely, that's just going to be a medical bird. Although Air, Air Methods does a lot of different stuff, so ain't no telling there. Um, and then let me back out and get over here to Texas and see what we've got near El Paso. That's typically our other little location. And uh, let me see what this one is. This is uh, N473AH, Roberts Aircraft Company. So uh, let me see what we get a closer look here. Ah, I see there. Yeah, that's Air Medevac. Okay. All right. Good to know. So we won't waste time on those, although I do have some others. But it is interesting that they are uh, kind of rolling right into that general area, uh, air medevac. So, okay. And that'll come up later in a second because I did have some interesting data points I thought were um, kind of wild. So, okay. Now, uh, speaking of helos, as we kind of look at what's going on, this is going to be uh, basically state troopers, Texas state troopers, DPS, uh, N329TX rolled out of Del Rio and was headed over to Mexico. Um, that little flight uh, headed in that general area. This is your border right here. All right, so uh, there's that one. And let me see here. Earlier this morning, it actually rolled out of uh, Ovalde back over here, um, headed towards Del Rio, okay? So it looks like we're getting um, more activity now, helicopter-wise. Uh, for a little while there, it looked like it was all headed down to Brownsville, uh, but this time it looks to be headed uh, more in the Del Rio area. Now, I don't know what's going on with our um, immigrants coming in, uh, that big wave of folks we had uh, in the last day. I haven't watched it in the last 24 hours, but um, they're still on the move, headed our way. So uh, this is N140TX. Again, this is a DPS, uh, Texas DPS, uh, one hour, 15 minutes ago, came out of Marfa. Uh, headed over to Alpine and uh, another short little flight uh, let me see I think we got a partial flight here because I don't see it going up or down so that looks like it it uh, came out of Marfa and then just disappeared on us all right um, and so let's see it was out here in Alpine Fort Stockton and then back from Marfa over to Alpine so that's going to be for today all right and uh, now let's pop over here to Cherry Point this is our other base that seems to be getting poppies right now um, now, this one came in. This was kind of an interesting. I think they're putting some folks up at Colorado Springs as well uh, because I'm seeing this return flight coming back and forth. This is going to be Sierra Pacific um, flying. And now, they're based out of Tucson, Arizona. Um, but uh, I, I will show you. It's not a coincidence that they're we're flying into Tucson. It has nothing to do with where they're, where they're based out of. So, uh, But this is a 737-500. Uh, came in from Colorado Springs uh, at Cherry Point, and then from there, I don't see them rolling out. So they are, uh, let's see, that's where they arrive. So they're still sitting there. So tomorrow they'll probably roll out with some fresh legs. Uh, this is the Flight 708. Uh, so that's a the end number that's uh, given by, uh, that's 
the FAA basically uh, maintains that database, right? So that's your N number. It's a registry uh, for all U.S. based aircraft, okay, or registered U.S. registered aircraft, not based, okay. Uh, N708S landed four hours, 16 minutes ago. Colorado Springs, Cherry Point, that's the flights we were just looking at. Again, 709S, that's a sister ship. Now, for some reason, we keep running these two back to back. Uh, wherever one goes, the other one goes. So, um, so that will tell you we're holding about 220, so you're at uh, 440 people every time that thing moves if they're full, uh, full loads, okay? Uh, but yeah, rolling out of Tucson to Colorado Springs and then from Colorado Springs to Cherry Point. We'll see where it goes tomorrow. Uh, kind of be another reveal. All right. Um, now let's get over here to Hunter Army Airfield. We'll talk about Tucson here in just a second, a little further. Um, here's one of the things. Now, this is the one in Savannah that we were actually seeing them move poppies back and forth, uh, but it seemed to wane a little bit. I haven't seen um, any activity other than we had uh, actually, now this is all week, so it's kind of slowed down this week. Although I want to point these out, these flights right here um, are uh, Meta, Meta Air Evac. So um, I don't know. These are helos coming in, and I don't know what they had Friday and Saturday, but they were rolling, uh, you know, quite a few people out of there airlifting. So um, just thought that was an interesting data point. Okay. All right. Now, uh, one other thing I do want to point out before we advance further on uh, is that. The U.S. isn't the only one right now that's going through a little bit of the immigration uh, increase or the flux. Uh, evidently, Poland and Belarus are also on their border having massive immigration things. Now, one of the things I want to point out about this is because I just want to give you a comparison when you start looking at the Middle Eastern folks coming into our country, as well as even the Central and South Americans. Uh, do you notice one thing? in every picture we ever get of the immigrants coming in. I see, there's a, there's a female, I see two kids, three kids, one more female. Everything else in this picture are males, right? Military age males, okay? You think that's a coincidence? I don't think so. Uh, but that, they're not just, uh, this is uh, folks that are actually Iraqis trying to get back to their home country uh, that escaped during the war uh, over to these these countries looks like they're trying to get back home and the government's going to be bringing them back in it looks like so uh but i just want to point that out this is a very interesting um uh that the fact that these are all the same you know military age males all right okay now this is one thing i do want to point out i got some intel over the weekend from uh one of our monkey nations out in arizona uh or our monkeys out in arizona um, who was on the road, drove into this area and took some pictures uh, and was uh, and, and sent them over to me. Now, he tells me this is about one click uh, away from uh, this Tucson International Airport East, okay? So I'm thinking it's going to probably be somewhere in this general area based on this crossroad right here. So somewhere in here is this right here. And I'm going to show you. Remember, we've been talking for... Uh, a little while now that they are definitely they have some type of housing I saw them going to Tucson I said they got tent cities going on out here in Tucson right because they're not going to a military base um, so I uh, just want to show you this uh, these are actually pictures that were taken now notice there are three signs on that one I'll point out that is razor wire across the top um, that is to keep people in not keep people from getting in okay uh, but there it is tent city you can see that four-way cross uh, carved out right there. Uh, but those signs, if you zoom in on the signs, uh, one of them is uh, no pictures allowed. Uh, there's a camera on there. It tells them that you're not allowed to take pictures. Uh, the other is only authorized personnel. And then the other one is some type of other warning, um, basically telling them, you know, uh, I don't know. It, it looks like it's a, a do not uh, trespass sign um, to the left of that. And like I said, it's some kind of a... Um, I couldn't tell if it was a DOD reg or what it was, but um, nonetheless, if you notice, though, they got the tents cooled. They got the, the AC. You can see the AC unit on the outside. They're right behind that speed limit sign. Uh, but that, look at, the, look at the wire going across the very top of that thing. That thing is, is made so that people cannot get out, okay? Now, if you remember, we've talked about in the past how people were 
it was basically like free range chickens, right? They could come into the base. They could come and go as they wanted to. They were taking Uber, uh, in and out. Um, they weren't being held captive, but then we see this with a uh, little bit of razor wire along, along the fence, uh, which tells you, uh, that that is really not the case. Okay. Uh, but it also tells you that that bad dude could be repurposed very quickly. Okay. Uh, and could hold us. All right. So, and that's why we got to pay close attention to this because, uh, you know, you got them. This is just one of another, there's 35 of these out there all over the U S. If you look at all the bases we're holding people in, you know, military installations are made for people not being able to get in. But if you're on one, good luck getting out. Right. So, um, like I said, something is definitely uh, has a very World War II feel to it, okay? All right, now let's hop over here to Guantanamo Bay. I just want to show you what's been going on there. Over the weekend, we did have another United Airlines flight 2572 that rolled in on Saturday. Um, I would imagine this is prep for um, what's going on with uh, the trial that's currently underway. So other than that, really not too much. We did have this N746SF uh, that rolled through uh, Barton Logistics over the weekend. Again, that's a little small H-25B. If you guys want to see, I'll show you the picture here of that aircraft. You can see uh, for a logistics company, that's that's moving people. That's not going to be, you know, they're not putting cargo on that bird, okay? So um, beautiful little aircraft, all right? So there is that. Um, let me see where that little dude has been since it's been in Guantanamo Bay. Uh, cause like I said, it was a random pop in, pop out. It's been to Wilmington, North Carolina. It's been back to Naples a couple times, Myrtle beach, Fayetteville. Um, and then now it's out in Monterey, California. All right. Okay. There is that. Now, uh, as we talk about the flights, we talk about the aircraft that we've watched from time to time going in and out, in and out of Guantanamo Bay. Um, one of the things I'm going to point out. These are agency birds, and uh, just want to show you, uh, I, I typically just cherry pick the ones that are interesting, okay? And so this one here landed a day ago. Uh, it was in Wiesbaden, Germany, and it went uh, to Ghana, all right? So it's down here in Africa. Remember, these are agency birds. This general area, um, actually kind of along here, Sierra Leone and Ghana and that whole region, uh, are pretty much... Uh, they're the ones that pop in and out with Ebola on a pretty regular basis. So um, anytime you see the agencies rolling through here, uh, always makes you kind of, you know, eyes on them. So yeah, if, if there was ever anything going to roll out like smallpox or, or Ebola or something into the U.S., you'd think this would probably be the region because they're not really super vaccinated down here. And um, uh, I don't know that, uh, you know, uh, they probably get stuff that we have never seen. All right. So. Okay, now uh, over here, another one in four, uh, sorry, 549 PA. This, these are all gray birds, what they call uh, Phoenix Air, okay? Uh, this one came out of Fort Hood over to Cartersville. Uh, just pointing that out because remember, we were just talking a minute ago about Fort Hood uh, and the fact that, uh, you know, I feel like there's probably some activity going on um, at that location. And so to see an agency bird pulling in there uh, does kind of make you wonder. All right. So it came out of, uh, this is on Sunday, came out of uh, Andrews up in the brown zone, went down to uh, the Austin, Fort Hood area, uh, and then back to Cartersville. Now, more than likely, uh, this took somebody from Joint Base Andrews down to uh, this location, dropped them off, and then it deadheaded back because Cartersville is their home base, home operations base. Okay. So they're not... They probably didn't take anybody. That was probably an empty, empty leg coming back. Okay. Um, all right. So there is that. And let's bump over here. This is N173PA. Again, another Phoenix bird. They call them gray birds for this reason. Uh, if you can see a picture of the, air, uh, the aircraft or not. Uh, let me see if it'll cooperate this time and click on one. Uh, but it's a gray bird. It's literally a gray bird. Beautiful, beautiful Gulf Stream. High dollar. Um, but there's that. That's a little G3. Um, and these things, man, we have tracked them all around the world. So, uh, this time it's, uh, rolled out of Japan over to Mongolia. So I don't know who's on that one, but again, agency bird. Okay. All right. And that was, uh, on Sunday it was up in Anchorage and then it rolled on out to Japan. Uh, and then on Monday, next day, uh, rolled out of Japan over to Mongolia. 
All right. Now, uh, this is one I just want to point out. I found it interesting today because, uh, as you know, when we get over here to uh, this, and let me do a quick reset real fast. Hang on a second here. Do a burn, uh, which will clear, clear it all, and then uh, do a refresh. And, um, okay. So we'll see. We'll get the latest and greatest here. Do a refresh on that one. And scale it back just a little bit. Now, I threw Dallas down as my center point just because it's kind of in the middle of the U.S. I could be in Tulsa if we want, uh, just so we are more center point there. But, um, okay. So this is just looking at the map from a top-down perspective. And these pinks are the ones that don't want to be seen, okay? Now, earlier today, we had one of those pinks that was down here in the corner in uh, kind of the big El Paso uh, Army Air Base side, okay? And when I clicked on it, it tried to tell me it was a Cessna. And I was like, okay, not too often you see a lot of Cessnas that don't want to be seen. But I went and pulled the tail number, which is N625PL, and it ties over to a GV Air Inc. However, this is where it got kind of interesting because uh, as I looked at pictures of in 625 PL, it is a 747 operated by, you guessed it, Kalita Air. So um, that is the aircraft. Certainly not a Cessna, uh, but certainly uh, doesn't want to be seen. So uh, these guys will carry a lot of troops um, and they will carry a lot of cargo. So it just depends really what they're doing on their mission. But uh, they clearly didn't want me able to track them or anybody else for that matter. Uh, this was one of the pictures just to confirm, you know, I always try to, you know, make sure it's just not a one-off photo, but uh, this was one of the other ones uh, that had it in there. And so you can see uh, evidently at one point they had a pylon that actually cracked and uh, they just dropped the engine. And of course that doesn't change much except for weight and balance uh, on the aircraft, but it can certainly fly with three engines. Uh, those things are just hosses. So anyway, kind of an older bird. Um, but there you have it, all right? So we did confirm that was one of the Kalita errors, all right? So, all right, let me just make sure I have covered everything over here on my board. We talked a little bit about uh, Tucson. We did talk about these, uh, these, this flight here doing its little uh, gathering. And then the Swift errors uh, from earlier uh, this morning. Uh, just so you guys know, Swift, if you look, you can see him rolling out of Laredo down to Mexico. Um, let me see, Alexandria up to Harrisburg. That's not going to the border. It's heading another direction. Valley to El Paso, Valley to El Paso. Uh, so, and then it looks like we had one, Jose Martin over to Miami. So um, definitely still moving a lot of folks around, okay? And those are all, for the most part, going to be bananas, all right, south of the border. Okay, now, as we go into build better back, whatever it is, uh, I just want to point something out here real fast. Uh, this, uh, we actually had the Taliban doing a military parade today for a graduation of their uh, soldiers. I'm just going to blow this up a little bit. That's a Soviet helicopter, not U.S. Uh, but you can see these guys now. It is kind of funny. One of these dudes is wearing uh, like full on. Um, he's no body armor, just wearing just wearing the uh, uh, the pouch. That's it. So. Uh, yeah, this was their this is their ceremony today, where they basically went through and showed how all the stuff they got from America and uh, all the other good fun stuff. But they had a parade. Uh, this is the stuff Biden left behind. There you go. Look at these uh, M117s. There you go. Um, so yeah, there's a guy. Uh, there we go. Okay. All right. Looks like it's repeating. Uh, so yeah. That's your dollars at work, everything we left. You remember we just did a piece on Biden that he talked about, sorry, flashbang, uh, where he actually was talking about the fact that, um, you know, uh, if we pulled out any faster than seven months, they'd have to leave all the equipment behind. And then that equipment would be used against your kids and your grandkids, right? And so, and then here we just did it. So uh, just, to, just to show you the numbers, uh, this is actual the U.S. Government Accounting Office or the GAO. Uh, as a rounded down what we had left behind, okay? And so I just want to show you there, this is the Taliban, a.k.a. terrorist organization's new arsenal. Uh, 22,000 Humvees, 8,000 trucks, uh, 155,000 uh, mixed pro mine-proof vehicles, 169 armored personnel carriers, uh, 42,000 trucks and SUVs, 
64,000 machine guns, uh, 176 pieces of artillery, 126,000 pistols, 358,000 assault rifles, 16,000 night vision goggles, all right, 162,000 radios. Comms are very important, okay? Uh, and that is just on the ground side. Now, if you get over here to the helicopters, uh, that's going to be Soviet right there. The 33 Soviet helicopters, um, they grabbed 33 UH-60 Blackhawks, uh, 43 MD-530s. Those are kind of like your little birds, all right? Four C-130s, 23 Embraer Super Tucanos, 28 Cessnas, and 10 other Cessnas here, strike, strike aircraft. So, yeah, man. That right there is Taliban's new arsenal, Build Back Better Afghanistan, because that's the only country that actually seems to be getting uh, any forward progress right now. And so, uh, all right, so there's that. Let me jump over here to uh, our, our um, sky glass. We can just kind of take a quick look at what we've got. Uh, let's see here. We've got an H4AT. Again, another little, uh, this little bird does not want to be tracked. Looks like it's coming out of uh, Palm Beach area. Uh, headed down, looked like it went to Dominican Republic or Haiti and then back up. So there is that. Um, let's see here. This is actually going to be a, let's see who FAM is. That's down in Mexico and in and, and Cancun area. Um, that's going to be uh, Mexican Air Force, I think, or something along those lines. So, okay. And then these are all just birds that, like I said, don't want to be tracked. Now that picture right there. Well, it just went away on me. Let's see if I can get it back. Nah, I don't want to do it. All right. Well, that was a gunship, C-130 gunship. Pretty cool. Pretty cool little aircraft. Uh, but that is what the U.S. is looking like right now. And again, these are all military. And then some of these uh, are just, like I said, the pink ones. They don't want you knowing what they're doing. Uh, so very secretive. Okay. All right, folks. Listen, that is going to do it. We hit our 30 minutes uh, for the rest of the sit rep, and we are wrapping it up. And so... I will be back on Wednesday with our next one. Uh, hang in there. Uh, things seem to be uh, getting better by the day, don't they? So uh, stay frosty out there, folks. God bless. Thank you out. Check out the latest gear and products at Monkey Works US.